In this part, I will explain how to customize the application from part 1 by including a CSS file. So we need to include that as a resource, and as an external resource. I will duplicate the directory from the previous part and I will update the date here. And I will set this as part 2. So now I will open the directory, rename the project, and open it with our studio. Now, what I will do is to go to the description and update the name of the package or the Shiny app. In this case, are the same because we are working with Golem. And I will change this to Shiny Part 2. I will proceed to save this and something really important I will go to R and then open up config and modify the AppSys function because then when we look for the external resources we want to look for Shiny Part 2 and I will proceed to save the changes with Control S on CMDS on Mac. Where are these resources? Inside the inst folder, then up, and then www. And for part one, we already included a fab icon to include an icon in the tab in the internet browser. Before continuing, I will check my results with the check function from the tools, but it is important that you consider that in this case I have a modification I will show the modification immediately so if I type use this colon colon edit add profile this will show a file that's saved in my user directory and there I included dev tools and use this which means that every time that I open our studio or I restart the session, the tools and just this are opened immediately. And this is why I have access to the functions uh, such as um, create, go, uh, create a GitHub token, create from GitHub, or the use add function or the create project function. So that's it. So now I will run check in console. And this should return any warnings or errors from part one. And I will correct those here and then proceed to the CSS modification. Okay, so if I expand the console, it's telling me that there are no bindings for empty cars. Empty cars is a table. So the suggestion that this is giving me here uh, about using an import from is not that good because let me show you if I open the R directory and then let's say I open app server. With the import from, I can import a function in this case filtered from replier, but for a data set such as empty cars. I can just type datasets colon colon empty cars. Otherwise, if I include an import from here by calling uh, empty cars, then the checks will give a warning that uh, empty cars is not an exported function from the datasets package. And the datasets package comes with R. You don't need to install that. It's a part of a base. So I have one modification here in server and if I explore the warnings again in app UI I also need to modify the content because I, I called empty cars there as well so I will go to app UI and here control F and then empty cars
and we need to look and that's it there's where we have the empty cars table so we type data sets column column and that's it so now our choices will be the same but this is updated so now i go to file then save all that's it now we'll clear the console and check again Now it's okay, zero errors, warning, select notes, that's perfect. So now, instead of going to build and then install, uh, see the previous part, or Control shift v or CMD, shift v on Mac, um, I will use the load all function. And this is the same on Macs, uh, PCs, etc. So load all, it's very similar to installing the package, but you load all the functions on the fly. So when you do a lot of modifications, you save time because you don't have to reinstall the package and restart the session every time. And this is especially good when you do many small changes. So now I type load all and I can access all the functions from the app package shiny part two now. So now I can run the application by calling the run up function from this application. And the app is running, same as in the previous part of the video. Here it will be interesting to sort this, right? Like 468 and not 648. So now here we can, in the choices, add another pull and then use a sort and that's also base R. So now I click on the console, I hit escape to stop the application and then with the arrow up I can press one, two, three or n times and see the previous functions that I've used and with arrow down I can go to the most recent functions so I go to load all again, and then I run the application a second time. So now the selection is 468 and not another um, arrangement or sorting. So we can see that this is filtering and it's, it's fine. Okay, now I will open the application in the internet browser to start exploring this. So I will hit Ctrl Shift I because I'm on Firefox. For Chrome, there's a really similar command, you can Google it. And with this icon, the arrow icon next to the inspector icon on the right side of the browser, I can explore the elements of my application. And let's say I hit on the, on the title, and this is an H1, we can see this in the CSS, and also we can explore that. It also tells us that it's, a, it's an H1. Uh, like a title one in, in Word. So now we open our studio again, close the app with escape after clicking in the console, and we go back to the root of the project and go to the dev folder. And in, inside the dev folder, we have the amend description function that fixes anything that's missing in the description or in the namespace, I can run it. And now it added the datasets package as a requirement. So this wasn't there previously. So if I delete that to show you again, I will delete that, save the description and run the amend description once again. And that's because we have a call to the datasets package in our functions. That's it. But also inside the dev script, this 
script, once again, as in the previous part, is provided by Golem, and it's excellent to have this kind of templates to simplify our work. Now we do Control S and look for CSS. And this is important because we modified the app config previously so that then the application can find the CSS file. The file doesn't exist at this moment, but we are going to create it. So now we run the add CSS file function. Where is this file? This file is an inst app www as I mentioned previously. So here we can include something such as h1, then curly brackets, and we can add, for example, a font size, let's say 48 pixels, and then we can specify a font family. Then we open quotes and we can type something like a Comic Sans MS and otherwise a Sans Serif if the font is not available. And we can also specify a color for the title. So we go back to the browser, new tab, and we go to color dash x.com. So here we can go to latest palettes. This is a really nice website. This palette here seems to be really fine. Um, I will copy this color here, super fun palette. So now I go back to our studio and I paste this hex color. So now I will save the CSS file, then type load all once again, and then run the application and see what happens. So now we have one modification here, but we can continue exploring different options. We hit Control Shift I once again, then proceed to explore the rest of the elements in here. So if we click on the HTML, we can maybe include a background. Let's say we include a background here. And let's say we include, a, let's say, a beige. So that includes a beige tone, probably not the best modification. But we can also proceed to alter any element that we have in here. So for example, these uh, TH elements. What if we want to put all the TH elements in italics, for example? So we can hit a font style and then set italic. This is ignored because the shiny app internally calls other CSS files that are accessible from Shiny and Golem itself. But we can add an exclamation here and set an important. And this will put all the text inside a th in italics. So we can even copy these selectors here, right? Or we can just copy the, just the th or just the complete CSS path or tree. So we copy that. Then we go back to the CSS file and we paste this content. And here we can also change the font family. Let's say that we want to put this in Times New Roman or Serif otherwise if the font is not available. So now I close the app again, click on console and escape, then load all, and then run app. And now my table has a different style. So you can keep adding different modifications. You can explore on Google and how to alter a, a table or a, an H1, H2, etc. And important here, you can also load Google Fonts. I will show you uh, this for completion. So we go to Google and we, we search for Google Fonts. And here we can search any font that we like. For example, let's say 
Roboto Condense. So we click on the font here. So let's say that we want regular 400. So we can import this in our CSS. So we select the Add Import option. We copy the part inside the style in here. And we go back to our application, paste the CSS here. And now we can include something different. So now we can call, let's say, Roboto Condense here instead of Comic Sans. And this will connect to Google Fonts website and get the required files to display this font inside our application. So now I load all again and then run up. And now we have the titles in Roboto Contents. I hope you like this video. Thank you very much.